In Greek mythology and folklore, Thanatos was the personification of death. His role was to carry humans to the underworld when the death clock has ticked. His mother was Nyx, the goddess of night, his father Erebos, and his brother was Hypnos, the god of sleep. Thanatos' role has faded in Greek stories and myth, as he was mostly replaced by Hades, the god of the underworld. Moreover, his role of guiding the dead was replaced with Hermes, making some argue that Thanatos was a mere aspect of the psychopomp. Thanatos had a reputation of being merciless, and both gods and men have feared him. But did he live up to his reputation? Why is Thanatos different than Hades? What does Thanatos have to do with our psychology? What kind of death did he resemble? Find answers to these and more questions is our new episode of the Greek mythology series. The character of Thanatos was well described by Hesiod in the Theogony, which reads as the following. And there the children of dark night have their dwellings, sleep and death, awful gods. The glowing sun never looks upon them with his beams, neither as he goes up into heaven, nor as he comes down from heaven. And the former of them roams peacefully over the earth and the seas broad back, and is kindly to men. But the other has a heart of iron, and his spirit within him is pitiless as bronze. Whomsoever of men he has once seized, he holds fast and he is hateful even to the deathless gods." End quote. Thus Thanatos became a merciless god, hated by mortals and the gods alike. Some myths have shown that he could even be outwitted, but more about that later in the video. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button if you want more content like this. On Greek basis, Thanatos was depicted as a bearded old man with prominent wings. On some rare occasions, you could have found him depicted as a young man too. Moreover, Thanatos has also been portrayed as a slumbering infant in the arms of his mother Nyx, or as a youth carrying a butterfly, which on ancient Greek also meant soul, or a wrath of poppies, as they were associated with Hypnos and Thanatos because of their hypnagogic traits and the eventual death by overexposure to them. Did you know? that Thanatos is closely associated with the alchemical Nigredo stage and shadow work. If you want to learn more about it, watch the video that will appear in the top right corner. Homer described in the Iliad that Thanatos with his twin brother Hypnos was charged to swiftly deliver the slain hero Serpedon to his homeland of Lycia. It read as following. Then Apollo gave him, or Serpedon, into the charge of swift messengers to carry him, of Hypnos and Thanatos, who are twin brothers, and these two presently laid him down within the rich countryside of broad Lycia. Thanatos had siblings that were of an eerie reputation, and some of them were Geras, Old Age, Moros, Doom, Eris, Strife, Nemesis, Retribution, and more. He was even closely associated with the three Moirai, and the particular one as Anthropos, who was a goddess of death in her own way. But Thanatos' death wasn't a violent and bloodthirsty death like that of Ceres. His death was gentle and soothing, a death that approached on his brother's wings with a dreamlike quality. When it comes to stories about Thanatos, there are a few. In one of them, Zeus ordered Thanatos to take Sisyphus and chain him down in Tartarus. But Sisyphus had other ideas and managed to put Thanatos in his own shackles. This prevented death of mortal men as long as Thanatos remained confined. As battles would rage on for too long and no one would die from them, Ares got enraged and released Thanatos while taking Sisyphus to the gods to be judged. As death is the only god that loves, not bribes, most believe that our god was inexorable, but Hercules fought otherwise. 
when Thanatos tried to take the soul of Aclestis, who had offered her life in exchange for the continued life of her husband, Hercules overpowered him with his sheer force, making Thanatos flee. Thanatos in Euripides Aclestis says the following Much talk, talking will win you nothing. All the same, the woman goes with me to Hades' house. I go to take her now and dedicate her with my sword, for all whose hair is cut in consecration by this blade's edge are devoted to the gods below. I win greater honor when the victims are young." End quote. There was also an Orphic hymn that invoked Thanatos, and I'll read it to you. Hear me, O death, whose empire unconfined extends to mortal tribes of every kind. On thee the portion of our time depends, whose absence lengthens life, whose presence ends. Thy sleep perpetual burst the vivid folds, by which the soul attracting body holds. Come unto all of every sex and age, for naught escapes thy all destructive rage. Not youth itself thy clemency can gain, vigorous and strong by thee, untimely slain. In thee the end of nature's works is known, in thee all judgment is absolved alone. No suppliant arts thy dreadful rage control, no vows revoke the purpose of thy soul. O blessed power, regard my ardent prayer, and human life to age abundant spare. Death is hated by mortals who call him black, evil, and grievous. For they think that darkness will enfold them when death lays its heavy hands on them. Although Thanatos may come in old age, mortals still call him swift and his arrival is often regarded as unannounced or sudden, causing even surprise. Yet there are no doubts about Thanatos' coming and no man knows for certain whether he will still be living the next day. In Christianity, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse was believed to be Thanatos. When it comes to psychology, Sigmund Freud said that humans have a life instinct, which he named Eros, and a death drive, which is commonly called Thanatos. This death drive allegedly compels humans to engage in risky and self-destructive acts that could lead to their own death. Behaviors such as thrill-seeking masochism and aggression are viewed as actions which stem from this drive. Moreover, this principle of the death drive, or Thanatos, is understood as a psychic force connected with the mother complex. Destructivity can temporarily emancipate the ego from unconscious dependency in the so-called phallic narcissism. It is believed to be present in the immature or fragile ego. As we've seen from our Negredo stage video, Thanatos can be therapeutic in that it aims at strengthening weak ego consciousness. He can ward off unconscious wholeness, invariably associated with the mother archetype, in which the borders of personality are dissolved. Although it serves to avoid regression, destructiveness can become quite obsessive. As in Egyptian mythology, the sun god Horus' struggles against Seth it illustrates the dynamics of Thanatos. Every night, Seth defends the sun bark by defeating the negative mother in the guise of the chaos monster Apophis. Thanks to Seth, the sun of consciousness is restored and can rise again in the morning. In history, phallocentric culture is sustained by Thanatos in its restorative capacity but this runs contrary to the ideals of culture whose guiding god is Horus. Now, let's conclude this video with a quote from Carl Jung. Death is an important interest, especially to an aging person. A categorical question is being put to him, and he is under an obligation to answer it. To this end, he ought to have a myth about death, for reason shows him nothing but a dark pit into which he is descending. Myth, however, 
can conjure up other images for him, helpful and enriching pictures of life in the land of the dead. If he believes in them or greets them with some measure of credence, he is being just as right or just as wrong as someone who does not believe in them. But while the man who despairs marches toward nothingness, the one who has placed his faith in the archetype follows the tracks of life and gives right into his death. Both, to be sure, remain in uncertainty, but the one lives against his instincts, the other with them. We hope you enjoyed this video about Thanatos. If you did, please like, share and subscribe to Hermes Hub. Thanks for rebuilding Olympus.